So before we get into the video itself, I want to say that I'm going to be taking a more neutral approach to this. No, I don't want to be pouring more like oil onto the fire. I'm going to be certainly treating this like a case study. I want to give you guys the facts, a whole bunch of this stuff that happened and kind of let you guys form your own opinion as well as like, you know, how can we exactly learn from this? Because this topic is relatively new, so there is a lot that could come out of this. Hi. Welcome back to another Blue Archive video. My name is Lace and today we're going to be talking about VTubers in terms of Nexon VTuber. Her name was Irua and we are going to look at the situation which unfolded in the last like 24 hours or so. You can see this tweet is 23 hours ago. I am first going to run through a couple of the different facts surrounding this case. After that, I'm going to run through a couple of different examples where this has kind of happened before and then to finish it off, I will throw in my own thoughts. All right, and so to kick things off, let's start with the facts. What exactly happened? So 23 hours ago, we had the announcement of a new VTuber to represent Blue Archive or rather Nexon's Blue Archive. And so as you can see, we have this VTuber down here and there was actually this link over here where I can actually show you guys. Um, okay, let me pull that up. It's exactly what it looks like. It's a Korean VTuber. I honestly think that she was all right. She's, she's decent. And so what exactly happened was that there was a massive outrage from a large part of the Korean community. I'm talking on like Korean Twitter as well as Korean BA forums. So I'm talking like stuff like this. And there are a whole bunch of reasons as to why people were outraged, right? Currently for the English speakers, there are two threads, uh, one on our Gacha Gaming and one on our Blue Archive, which kind of details everything that has gone on here. But a summary of everything that was kind of said was pretty much like, we prefer our money to be spent like towards improving the game itself rather than taking this mixed media approach with the VTuber thing. So things like translations, uh, better voice lines, fixing bugs, content updates, merch, etc. And on top of that, the VTuber itself, it's like, it wasn't really up to their standard, right? So it doesn't really look like she fits in to the Blue Archive world because that's kind of what they're trying to contextualize her as. I think they were just trying to say that it wasn't like really well done. Uh, to put it nicely. However, in terms of like support for Arona, so Arona, if you guys know uh, this one over here, there is actually a lot of support for Arona, for Arona to actually take on a lot of those like VTuber-like responsibilities. So like, I guess being cute as well as announcements and playthroughs and all of that. And then last of all, in a couple of these threads, there are a few claims where it was a lot of like, uh, there was anti-feminism or anti-male, let me try to find. So just something like this, right? Anti-feminists, anti-males. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't 100% understand this, but I think it's essentially like feminism and then anti-feminism and then just a lot of like quite hardcore personalities coming together and clashing. And so unfortunately, all of this, has led to the cancellation of our new VTuber within about nine hours. So as you can see, the cancellation was about 14 hours ago. So what this meant was that Irua was born uh, lived for about nine hours and then uh, subsequently killed off. And so it's been 14 hours since the cancellation of Irua. I do want to say that there is this, like there are a couple of different apologies that are out there. This is from the PD himself. I think it stands for product director. Uh, essentially he apologizes and uh, let me just do the quick Google translate. And so in a nutshell, he's just saying like, well, I'm sorry that we did this. Uh, we're going to take it back. We're going to cancel it. And like we take seriously your criticism for like actually not putting money towards improving the game and producing a VTuber. There actually is an English interpretation of this one. So let me just bring that up. And so that's just this one over here. So we would like to extend our most sincere apologies for not being able to meet your expectations today. And so essentially they're saying that they received some feedback from some expressing their concerns that these extra efforts would negatively impact the game updates. So this is kind of in line as to what I've been seeing in the Korean community, of course, at the liberty of Google Translate. Very much, can you guys like stop spending our money on like your VTubers? and spend it on actually improving the game content, translations, etc, etc. And in terms of the Korean community, uh, you will see a lot of these ones. They're all thank yous. They're all like, oh, thank you for approaching this VTuber problem carefully. Thank you for listening to us users. So we won. You can see that certainly a lot of the sentiment is like, well, thank you for listening to us. Thank you for canceling the VTuber and hopefully we'll have a good service. And this one here actually corroborates my claim. Please translate the art on our channel, 17 likes. I think that's actually probably the most out of any comment over here. And the art on our channel is this one right here. So I'm just talking. 
Okay, cute. Yeah, so as of right now, there are actually 24 of these videos in the playlist. So from the sentiment in the comments, I do think that they are supporting Arana. I don't think that the Korean community is like strictly against VTubers. It's that they just wanted their money towards game improvements rather than mixed media. But that's just kind of like the general sentiment that I'm getting. Obviously, correct me if I am wrong. So in terms of some other facts that are relevant to the situation, here is one of Nexon's financial reports or like a slide deck that they prepared for investors. And essentially for their total revenue, 58% of it is originating from Korea. And as you can see, Blue Archive is certainly one of the top ones for Korea. And then we've got Blue Archive up here for Japan. However, Japan only makes up 4%. And then we don't actually see Blue Archive archive in China or North America and Europe, but we do see it again in the rest of the world. And the other thing I do want to talk about for this report is any mention of Blue Archive. I could go anywhere to look for Blue Archive and you'll see that Blue Archive is essentially carrying Nexon. All of it is like exceeded outlook, exceeded outlook. Uh, we've got like all of these losses, but like Blue Archive is kind of making it okay. So from a priority point of view, it's very clear that Blue Archive is a priority for Nexon because it is doing so well. All right, so that is all of the facts. Now I want to talk about, well, where this has kind of happened before and I'm talking in terms of like the corporate release of a VTuber. So you can kind of look at each of these as like different case studies, right? First of all, here we have Uma Musume. A lot of you Psy game simps will be very familiar with this character. Essentially, this game is a massive hit in Japan and they decided to do VTuber stuff. So look at this. VTubers, right? A lot of this good stuff, and it's actually finding some success, right? 69,000 views, and if I come over to the channel, you will see that she literally only just uploaded like one day ago, four days ago before that, eight days ago before that, and then 11 days, 296k views, I suspect like they are doing pretty well. And this is in the context of a game. So this is a game, Uma Musume, actually producing a VTuber themselves. Now for another instance, we have Azure Lane over here. And we have this ship. Unfortunately, I don't follow Azure Lane overly much, but essentially to my knowledge, this is one of the Azure Lane characters and she is essentially gonna be debuting as a VTuber or rather she already did. What the hell is going on here? Cool. Uh, what? Oh, wow, we caught her at a good moment. <laughs> what the frick? Okay, all right, you freaking Azra Lane DGens. Uh, love you guys, but like, my God. But yeah, you can see the success of this, right? This was only last month, one month ago, for 117k views. Azure Lane channel. If I do a quick sneaky Google Translate, you can see it's Azure Lane channel. So what I'm trying to say with these two examples is that it's been pulled off before. A game has successfully produced, like debuted a VTuber and the reception was kind of good. However, these were Japanese games and so catered towards the Japanese communities. For Korea, it might be a little bit different. I suspect like the mixed media, the VTuber kind of media is severely less prioritized for the Koreans. And obviously I'm saying this more as a generalization. So like, please don't take it personally. My guys don't be like, oh no, well, well I don't actually like, don't care about VTubers. I care about VTubers very much. I think you know what I'm trying to say. All right, so moving on, we do have two examples. So first of all is Crunchy Roll Hima over here, where some of these corporate VTubers were actually launched as the corporate VTuber rather than a game VTuber. So Crunchy Roll is certainly very much associated with games like Princess Connect. We've got Mitra Sphere, and then we've also got the, I think it was Memento something. I can't remember what it was called. But as we scroll through, you'll see that like the majority of the games she plays is actually quite meta. She is certainly following a lot of the games that like mainstream VTubers or even mainstream streamers play. She isn't really like confining herself to just these Crunchyroll games. And so to be honest, my thoughts on Crunchyroll Hime are like, this is probably one of the best done corporate VTubers I have ever seen. And to top it off, like the person behind the Crunchyroll Hime is actually like, she does a really good job. I can really feel the character from her. That's, that's really all I can say. And so last of all, we do have Enko, who is the Netflix anime VTuber. Yes, even Netflix has a freaking VTuber, which is Rock, utterly paper, insane. Scissors, shoot. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay. Um, moving on. So yes, my guys, it's not like Blue Archive, it's not like Nexon just like pulled some random stuff out of their ass. This has been done before and it has been quite successful. Crunchyroll Hime with the 100k subs, uh, Uma Musume like pulling in the views, 960, no sorry, 296k 
views, 209k views on that one. And so now I want to start talking about my own thoughts on this whole situation because there, there is a lot to learn from here. First of all, I do want you guys to remember that we're trying to take this from like an objective point of view, like a case study point of view. And as always, healthy debate is welcome in the comments. But if you are trying to just like purely flame, be like, man, either VTubers are ass or like, VTubers should dominate the world, I don't know, then please kind of chill out a little bit because we're trying to be a little bit constructive here. All right, so first of all, my context is that I don't actually like actively watch VTubers like this. Sometimes I catch some of those clips, like something like this, right? Like a two minute clip from a VTuber, I would like have a good laugh and then that's kind of it. However, I do follow some of their activities loosely, especially from a corporate level. So I'm talking Niji Sanji, I'm talking about Hololive, mainly more like from a news perspective because the concept and the phenomenon of VTubers YouTubers is actually quite cool. All right, so with that context out of the way, let's start off with how I feel about like the Korean reaction or what they're talking about, like saying that we need you guys to focus more on the game, something like that, right? It's actually quite hard to argue against why are you putting my money that we spent on your game into some media that no one really asked for when you could be instead fixing all of our bugs or improving the game service, improving the translations, making merch, etc, etc. From a consumer point of view, it's quite hard to argue against that. Like who does not want a better game, right? However, on the flip side, where we have the PD Young Ha Kim apologizing and actually retracting this VTuber announcement and debut. I also understand where Nexon is coming from. A lot of people are like, well, why are they so fast to freaking cancel this VTuber when it was just the Koreans, like just the Koreans that were lashing out against it. And all I can say from that is that from a business standpoint, it just makes sense. There was no other option considering 58% of their revenue, more than half was coming from Korea. Although it is from all of these different types titles, they must have the numbers. So like, look at this, North America and Europe, like Blue Archive is not even on here on the top three. There is a very, very good reason as to why they reacted for the Koreans and not for the international community. It's just unfortunately so very clear. So what about in terms of like, well, the decision to actually go into VTubers? I think that was actually a quite a good decision because if you have a look at this, the amount of super chat revenue from all of these, the majority of these VTubers are insane. Like imagine being able to make 200K or 166K, let's take the Niji Sanji one, from just super chats monthly in one month. In one month, this guy made 166k from doing like probably ASMR. It's like, it's like, like, bro, that is insane revenue. And on top of that, if they had a VTuber for their game, it's even more marketing reach. From a business standpoint, weebs, DJs, VTuber fans, yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, ah. Uh. They are certainly trending upwards and having blown up a lot with some help from COVID, it actually made a lot of sense to try it. So at the end of the day, am I disappointed in the sudden destruction of our new VTuber over here? Yes, yes I am. Because for me, all of these things are very, very interesting to follow. Like I think mixed media is a very interesting concept where you're starting to get these VTuber things out. And as more companies actually try these things out, maybe we can enjoy all of these like content in another form. But not only that, but also kind of like observe the impacts that it has on like the organizations themselves, as well as the, the wider entertainment and media consumption world. Personally, I feel really bad for the V8 because remembering that there is a person behind this, they were, they were about to debut and maybe it was finally their time to shine, but it all just kind of like came crumbling down because of some unfortunate circumstances. For me, as a fellow content creator who is a nobody, I can only wish her the best of luck in her next role. And so that is gonna bring me to my last question. Uh, could this have worked? And I think that it really could have. I personally think that it really could have worked if they used the crunchy role Hime strategy. If they had instead launched her kind of like a separate entity outside of the Blue Archive brand and more as like, a, oh, we have a Nexon VA, sorry, a Nexon VTuber. And this Nexon VTuber would play all of their Nexon games, such as like Blue Archive, Maple Story, uh, like literally everything over here. We got like Connor Fun, we got Kart Rider, etc., etc. Or maybe even sometimes games outside of their brands, such as like what Crunchy Hime is doing. She's playing freaking Minecraft. She's playing like Pokemon Legends Arceus. I'm pretty sure I saw that somewhere. For God's sake, she's playing Elden Ring. 
I think this would have worked if they had done it this way. Because from like a consumer's point of view, it's not like, oh man, they're using all of our blue archive money to make this VTuber. It's more like, oh, Nexon is coming out with a VTuber. And so it's that perspective that like all of these games are pulling their weight to make a VTuber that can help marketing for all of them. I mean, on the other hand, maybe we would have had a backlash that was like 10 times as worse as what we just saw. I don't know, guys. I just think that Crunchyroll Hime is a fantastic case study as to how you should be doing a corporate VTuber. But otherwise, my guys, that's kind of it. And so it's time to pass on the question to you guys. With all of those facts on the table and all of those like pieces of information, how do you feel about this whole VTuber uh, debut and then getting killed off in nine hours kind of situation? Remember guys to exercise a little bit of critical thinking. Don't just go full eight mo and be like, oh, VTuber bad or VTuber good. And so my dudes, let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up dropping a comment, I would really appreciate that because it means you've watched up until the end of the video. So thank you guys so much. Otherwise, if you did enjoy this video, then please consider a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, as your deceased Irua once said, all good things must come to an end. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.